In the tutorial about triggers, we triggered the animation path for the asteroid when the moon makes its first iteration around the Earth, and there we saw the asteroid go off into the distance. Let's say we wanted to hook into the event that fires when that animation path begins and play a sound. So I'll right-click and choose View Source to pop up Visual Studio 2010. I'll scroll down near the bottom, and after our canvas element, I will add an audio element with an ID of whoosh and I'll ask that to preload the audio when the page loads. And I'll add a couple of source elements. The first one will be the MP3 version of the whoosh sound, and the second one will be the WAV file version of the whoosh sound, just so we have compatibility with most of the major browsers. And now I'll scroll up and let's create a function called play sound. Let's put it, let's say here, that will play the sound. So the first thing I'll do is I'll get a reference to the ID that we just created called whoosh down at the bottom of the document and I'll ask that audio element to play itself. So now we've got the audio element loading and we have a function to play that sound we need to actually connect it up to that animation path. So I'll scroll up to the top of the document so I can discover which index in the animations array the asteroid path is and in this case I can see that it's the first one listed so it's at index 0. So let me scroll back down to the init function and above this start animation clocks area, let's subscribe to an event. So on animations 0, which is the path that we care about, I want to ask its path clock. When its started event fires, I'm going to subscribe my play sound function to be called. So now if I save that, go back over to the browser and refresh, when that path starts, I should have my whooshing sound play. So what we've seen here is that I can hook into the events that are fired by animations and perform my own custom actions.